Go. Cool, man. Hey. So, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, where you left off, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's just, uh, you know, these days we're just trying to take every opportunity that comes uh, my way uh, to have a performance. And this one was uh, through a friend of mine, um, Peter Bothnerby, who uh, was a stagehand with uh, New York Philharmonic. Hmm. And uh, apparently they were the Philharmonic players were playing at the pier nearby Culture Lab and they had a, you know, a different setup at the restaurant and everything. And this new structure that they built, the stage and the covering, I guess, is relatively new and it's really great. I mean, it just steps up the game uh, for the setting and for really uh, broadening possibilities. Uh, but anyway, but it was literally, can you put something together uh, basically within a week? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I was like, well, okay, so let me figure this out. And uh, luckily, I got, you know, some great colleagues that uh, are willing to do something like this uh, off the cuff. So steps in and Kim. And it's been forever since I've uh, performed with her. And uh, so there's just so many ways to kind of just get that, that energy, get that, you know, a bit of adrenaline that's so missed, both for the for the audience and for the performers, but uh, even more so for this particular show, because as it was kind of put together uh, quickly, I was uh, initially just set to play 45 minutes to an hour. And uh, then when I told that to Ed Joe, <laughs> he had uh, something else in mind because uh, normally that slot is a two hour session. So yeah, yeah. I had to pull things out of the hat. Uh, for that situation hence some of the, the solo stuff that I that I did which uh, I think the audience enjoyed uh, which was just such a cool juxtaposition though like you never know like a venue like that big parking lot uh, you know you got rock bands and jazz and you know all this type of vibe and cars driving over honking and yeah you we'd yeah. air you're like <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not your standard classical music situation but you know i love it and uh i think the audience enjoyed it and it's it's that mutual kind of beating off of uh live performance that is just like you, you grab every morsel so i'm really glad that it worked out and everyone there at culture lab is, is really awesome and uh, uh yeah i hope to pivot to more things because you know it is just piece by piece whatever little performance uh, can be grabbed um, I go for it, you know, especially during a time where people are just kind of dormant until mm. Lincoln Center decides to officially open up and, and there's just so many things to have to consider still. So outdoors it is. <laughs> that is true. Well, just for context for, uh, you know, future viewers here, uh, I recently met, uh, Derek Ratzenbach. Am I correct? Ratzenbach. Ratzenbeck, yeah. Ra uh, Ratzenbeck, yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, at uh, the Culture Lab in LIC, um, whom just recently turned into a nonprofit and also built an outdoor venue uh, in Long Island City. It's beautiful. And I started to volunteer there at, in the beginning of uh, July, and it's just been an amazing experience. And, and so I can just get back into the music and live performance scene. And uh, I, I had the opportunity to capture Derek and Anne uh, Thursday, and Derek's a, a second violinist in the, the New York City Ballet Orchestra, if I if I'm correct, and if I didn't mix the uh, you know the yes. wrong um, <laughs> That's great. title, um, and it was just such an amazing performance, and I, I, it was just an honor to kind of just experience that and capture that with my lens as well. Because generally, prior to the pandemic, myself, I was um, capturing more, you know, rock or you know, or just indie bands as well. Um, so I, I always wanted to get into more, you know, classical or even dance. Like dance fascinates me, and in trying to capture, you know, there's so much I could do as a photographer to capture dance and movement, um, and yeah. also, so it was just. It, that's a bit of an introduction of how I, I, I ran into Derek, you know, and Thursday. So for my viewers, uh, you know, down the road, uh, that that's a little context for this conversation. Yeah. So, 
Yeah. Um, but but I'm I'm you know pivoting off of being in New York City ballet for almost ten years now. Um, you know the the downturn uh, causes a lot of challenges, mm. and um, you know the uh, we ended up starting our own um, live stream series from our uh, our rooftop terrace last summer when nothing else was going on, mm. and um, I think that was around probably about a, exactly a year ago. And uh, you're a bit choppy, yeah, Derek. Uh, then, uh, audio, you're a bit. Uh, oh, audio is a bit wonky. Okay, but let me see if I can relocate to a better spot in the meantime. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you also see the location of the quote unquote speakeasy venue. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is, this is kind of uh, where all kinds of art happens. Let me see if this is any better. I think I... Oh. Is this better? Yeah, it was a, a bit of a uh, rough transition, you know, but with the, the movement, but uh, I think she should be good. Okay. Well, let's hope that works. Otherwise, I'll I'll just head inside to a safer location. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you're saying you started a, a you know you know due to the pandemic the new project Arts on Air last year, was it about a year exactly? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's correct. And um, it's been really kind of amazing, especially during that time. The level of artists that were uh, we were able to get a hold of to perform up here that hadn't played in months and months, like uh, uh, Grammy Award winning artists and tango bands, uh, Pedro Gerardo and, uh, you know, friends of mine that start new, started the new quartet, uh, like the Overlook Quartet, uh, had their second performance here uh, as they were created um, last summer and again performed here this past Wednesday. Is the audio not good? Um, yeah, yeah, the audio is super uh, choppy. <laughs> if uh... Uh, we will get this right, <laughs> I'll, I'll head indoors then. You know, <laughs> you'd think you, when you pay a hundred bucks a month for Wi Fi, it would it'd work a little better. No, exactly, um, right? Yeah, we, that's a different conversation. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> let's try location number three. Cool. All right. Check, check. This should check, be check. the most stable. All right, set three. Uh, cool. So anyway, well, I usually like to be outside for all these things for many reasons, but um, yeah. No, it's just been, we, we've done now 23 live broadcasts of uh, performers and raise thousands of dollars for them. And this is an opportunity to bring performances, you know, and be broadcast, obviously, like you're doing. You can reach people from all around the country and all around the world. And uh, it's definitely brought in our, our web. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, How are we Derek, uh, it's maybe, let me check my, um... we're good to go. Cool. So these, before the interruption, you're talking about Arts on Air, um, the numerous mm -hmm. artisans, uh, just high level artisans that just wanted to perform and just craved, you know, live performances. Um, yeah. So how did you pitch the idea? Was it just so organic there? Like, yeah, we just need to perform. Um, really, it, it, it was just because we have our own private outdoor space, yeah, it was safe, especially during, you know, during COVID where you just you couldn't go indoors anywhere uh, and let alone you try and go to parks and you have those hurdles of just noise and and uh, it's it's never a clean experience. Um, and um, so we just decided to start with some of my colleagues just to do this live stream. I dug into my closet, found a couple of cameras, figured out how to, uh, you know, revive my MacBook 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. I put a new hard drive. I just, just took stuff out that I hadn't used in years and uh, try and make it into something uh, that people could thrive off of. And we had, you know, Glenn Kritzer jazz uh, ensemble um, wow. to, um, you know, Cyberite Five places that were performing in Carnegie before the shutdown and, you know, world tours. Uh, the girl meets Boyd duo came to, I mean, uh, there are just so many things. And, uh, also from that, I started working with choreographers and, mm. uh, creating new works with dance, cool. um, and like solo violin. And that's actually still going on to this day, uh, creating new pieces, new projects. Um, cause my fiance is also a dancer, so she has some good connections and, people that are introduced uh, to me and are willing to work on um, new ideas. Yeah. So a lot has come from that. And uh, just this past weekend, I, I uh, fin wrapped up um, a month long kind of residency of sorts at uh, New York Botanical Gardens. Oh, cool. Where I was uh, performing with Zimmy Coker from American Ballet Theater. Mm. And uh, so we were playing there every Saturday afternoon. Wow. And uh, no, it's cool. I mean, just every every uh, experience is new and different and uh, unexpected because it probably would never happen pre pandemic. You know, all of these yeah. different random locations and uh, collaborations. So there's always a silver lining, but uh, it has been really tough. You know, do you think that will continue post? Well, I mean, you know who knows that, you know, the iterations are going to be out there. We have to kind of live with it out there now, you know, but do you think this, like, it's kind of like a post-war kind of era as well, whereas like post-World War II, you know, it's people just creating and, and just, or even post-World War I, you know, in the, you know, uh, just that era of just creating, you know, 20s. I'm terrible at like, reciting facts but i just did <laughs> yeah. well there, but, there was a big initiative to promote the arts you yeah know, after yeah. uh you know the the great depression there was a big stimulus to pay artists to create works of art and realizing that it's not only part of the soul of cities and the country as a whole it's it's also an economic stimulus yeah uh that you you if you if you bring the arts back alive, everything else thrives as well. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes the priorities are shifted these days. Um, but, you know, it's, it's going to be new creations continuing past this point um, because people um, that do appreciate the arts, it's, it's just like, it's a treasure now, now that we've experienced this time of just maybe watching all this virtual things and uh you know after i talk about my virtual concert series but yeah it's there's there's a time and place for that and uh i think that live streaming in general will continue because it is a convenience uh that people will enjoy in the future and probably will demand uh something like that mm. um to be able to enjoy a concert from home and just pay tickets to watch um you know for the for the live stream uh, version of things. So, so it might actually benefit in the end, lots of venues and, and artists, if they can offer that on top of live uh, tickets uh, yeah. situations when that comes on, on full fledged. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It, it, I, yeah, you're right. I think, it, yeah, we have the technology and the tools for as artists to kind of produce our own, own work, you know, and, and distribute it via yeah. the interwebs, you know? Um, yeah. how has the reception been to your show so far? Like, um, have people given you just like, this is amazing or like we needed this? Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, just going back to like the very first, uh, you know, it just started the, the arts on air and just bringing the artists first of all, and they hadn't performed live. And just the fact that there's cameras on them and that feeling of performing live, whether or not there was a real audience, like they were just like, Oh my gosh, I had, you know, I was, I had goosebumps or, you know, I was, it was, there was this new energy that I, I felt, I haven't felt in months. So that was rejuvenating on that. And, and of course, you know, the people from all over were very excited, you know, whether it was the neighborhood or family back at home uh, for that. But my, 
when I started performing live live in New York, um, it was at the church down the street and it was early in January. So it was a Cabrini shrine, mm. wonderful place. I'm uptown, you know, 190th and Fort Washington near uh, Fort Tryon Park. Okay. Um, but it's, it was surreal. Um, I, I played there in, in uh, January, played an hour long uh, set there. And it's kind of like a meditation uh, situation where there's, you know, not supposed to be applause, you know, beautiful setting. Mm. And um, people came up with like tears of wow. um, hearing that live music and, um, and, and just feeling that presence in the, in, in the room, you know, and that experience to share together. And it's just like, that was still social distanced and, you know, and, and it's just, it was the beginning of coming back slowly of, can we do this? Is this okay? You know, to experience this together. And, um, and they, they've been really great um, keeping that going uh, up here, uptown. And I played there again um, in March. And actually most recently I presented a new ballet that I produced oh, wow. called Night of Spring. Uh, I, I uh, yeah, I gathered uh, six musicians of New York City Ballet and six dancers. And I have a, a great choreographer, Skylar Shredder, that did the work. And my friend, uh, Jeremy Beck, uh, composed the piece based off of Stravinsky's Rite of uh, Spring, very roughly mm. off of themes. But uh, yeah, and uh, that, was a, that, was, that was probably the most thrilling um, experience of live performance was, was that, which was last month. And the whole neighborhood, the whole community was there. Mm. Um, probably about 200 people. And, um, you know, the, the kids too, you know, it's great when you can see them interacting, you know, uh, with the dance and uh, the curiosity and the music. So, um, you know, that affects, that affects um, generations. Now, do you have plans to kind of show that later on or like um, produce that even more? Like, yes, to yes. a larger scale, I guess. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that work itself was first intended to be a film mm. but as the market and everything online uh you know as, as spring came and things started opening up on top of the fact that the, you know it's saturated with dance films there's mm. been so many months of all of these productions not to downplay any of it but uh we felt it would have been it and it was a lot more effective to do it live as an actual live ballet yeah and yeah. um and I filmed some of that and uh, uh, perhaps it might be released. I'm trying to see if it, if it does it justice um, to release mm. something kind of like a live stream, uh, maybe to raise some money for musicians of uh, New York City Ballet and, and dancers, uh, you know, something like that. So it's in the works, but I definitely want to share that. And we're looking into grants to be able to present it at other locations around the city. I mean, mm. it's a, uh, it's a big work. Uh, it requires a lot of space, but it's definitely worth uh, putting on again. Um, hopefully, Culture Lab, maybe we could do something creatively there. There's, there's a lot of potential. Yeah. I, so, I'm actually kind of mulling over some ideas. Uh, hopefully, I kind of pitched the idea to Ezio the other day. Um, like, I want to, like, Actually, I want to produce the show this year based off of my conversation series. So I've talked to so many talented artists over the span of this year and a half or whatever. Um, I want to curate a show based off of their work. It could be musical, it could be video, because I've, I've talked to fine artists, musicians, you know, comedians. Like, so it'd be a, a eclectic uh, a curation and some big names so that, uh, I, I, uh, that could draw people in. I was thinking yeah. maybe create an auction, you know, have this auction. Um, you know, most of the, ben the benefits would go to Culture Lab, but maybe I'll take like a small portion. But then, you know, they're getting the money from this, you know, this art auction or, you know, auction. It could be sound material or artifacts or whatever. And mm -hmm. um, I, I think it would be great. I love producing like different experiences. Um, I'm finding yeah. that now, like, 
Um, I was kind of going to ask you just like a background like question, like how did you get started on this kind of journey? I, I always find it fascinating how people uh, found their, their craft and medium if it was early age or like myself, it's only been the last four, four years of, I'm in the later stages now of, uh, well, I mean like, I hate to say mid age, yeah, 36 though, but um I'm finding myself an identity as an artist now comparatively to when I was younger. But did you initially uh, pick up a violin and you're like, you know, at a younger age and you're like, this is it. Like, this is my craft. Well, I mean, it, at the time it wouldn't be like that, but I mean. Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, growing up uh, young, you know, my parents threw everything at me. My dad's soccer player, so it was my, my grandfather and, uh, my dad's an engineer and machinist. Uh, so music wasn't exactly in the family, but I had an old, older brother, uh, Marcus, that was uh, already playing guitar, playing some violin. And, um, and eventually I picked up piano and then uh, violin. And uh, in the beginning, I was just uh, really thriving on piano. And then uh, I kind of did the switch uh, to violin and focused on that. And yeah, I mean, I started at age four, so wow. it's been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. And just being the young guy that was always kind of, you know, the youngest in the, the senior class, you know, is like the little, whatever, I was 12 years old in the, in the upper class orchestra and all that stuff. Wow. So, um, I've just been doing that and wanted the, kind of lifestyle of an orchestral musician because if you work hard enough and win these crazy auditions which are like winning the lottery and uh you know it's it's a good life yeah. you know um you get to have all this great music you know you just show up to work you have a schedule uh you know you get to work with other you know great conductors musicians and all this stuff and mm. um and uh i was finally reaching that point of everything falling into place and it was it was nice. And then the pandemic hit. Of course. And yeah. it was literally <laughs> just pulled the rug under uh from, from out from under. You know, I was, you know, playing with the Mets as an associate. So I had, you know, I had a lot of great things. I was doing a lot of soundtrack recordings. Cool. And uh yeah. basically, you know, you work your ass off in New York, not just to get that initial job, but to go get all the the pieces that it is that what it means to be in New York is you get these opportunities that are not elsewhere and uh i really hope that that comes back but i want it to be still coupled with all this independently produced uh performances and things because mm. now i know that as nice as all that stuff is i can't rely on that ever again 100 percent. yeah yeah that's true that's kind of it kind of parallels my kind of story where my pho photographic journey is picking up i was getting a lot of momentum like press whatever and get bigger opportunities and then boom <laughs> yeah i was yeah. like ah oh, man <laughs> but then i i kind of started this uh conversation series which has been amazing too where i've i've gotten to dive deeper into you know talk to people i've never would have talked to or spoken to or you know reached out to the west coast and and just met all these amazing artisans i've never had access to prior to the pandemic or even thought of so I've, yeah. I've, I've started kind of building a community here of, you know, of uh, just casual conversations about craft. And it's just been so interesting as well. But I miss going out there and shooting shows like that's me. That's and then, you know, it's so it's like Thursday shooting you guys on stage is like, yes, it is awesome. Um, I hope my energy came out in the images. And I hope you enjoy them. But uh, <laughs> Absolutely. No, they're, they're great, man. And, um, it's just been a while since, you know, it's to be kind of put up on a, on a real stage. Like yeah, everything else has just been, that really was the first time on a, on a quote unquote real stage. So it was, um, it was a great feeling, um, to be part of that. So mm -hmm. yeah, everything else has been rooftops, which nothing wrong with rooftops. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, you know, it's just kind of you know you have all these different uh, um, things to deal with, whether it's wind or sound, and um, but we we always make it happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, may I ask you what what is your 
kind of preparation prior to stepping on stage? Do you have a preparation? Like, I don't know, is there a mental mode you have to go into to just start, it's, or is it already like, muscle memory, I guess? Or there's there's so many things these days that I I'm um normally I have to be thinking about so many things when doing self productions. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm making sure everyone shows up. I'm, you know, checking out the cameras. I'm usually setting up the PA and there's all these other things to think about. Honestly, by the time I get to the violin, I'm just like, boom, here it is. Let's go. I don't have time to prepare like perhaps I would have. Yeah. Um, but at this point, yeah, it's, it's just like, I'm lucky if I get to tune properly. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> just let alone warm up. Yeah. Which isn't yeah. exactly great for, you know, the the muscles and all of this stuff. But you know, these days it's just show up, make it happen, rock out, worry about the muscles. And I talk to my acupuncturist, you know. <laughs> I find I find it cool though, because that's kind of like um well, like you're applying kind of like a like a you know, rock kind of uh, basement show kind of mentality to orchestra where you know in classical music which is cool and i for me i find it interesting when mediums just like cross and like i don't yeah. like to categorize generally um you know and i just love seeing you know mashing up different mediums and, and having it work or seeing it work when other yeah. people do it and experimental stuff and it's so yeah. cool that you've built this like community uh, on the roof with choreographers and in dance and musicians and uh it's just su such a great vibe like I'm, I'm getting just a vibe thinking about it so it's um i i love to see such stuff continue you know like these these uh oh oh what's you that? froze uh, rob i hear you <laughs> uh, rob. derek <laughs> oh no is it uh oh um, we need to just we're back <laughs> uh, i think oh i i think my point or just uh my point was just i would love to see that this just organic uh, organic kind of cross collaboration continue and expand yeah. and yeah. to the the broader public but uh, pro, bro, uh pardon me <laughs> broader public eye you know um mm -hmm. because it, it just like that connection that community in the, the thirst for live performance and then just expression expressing you know the angst of being an artist during a time of like when you can't perform during, during a you know pandemic i, I think we're yeah. as artists we have a, a great opportunity to capitalize off that and make some beautiful work you know yeah that's unique to this time frame too yeah what that's... i think was lacking in the, in the last you know decade i think is this this i i feel like artisans were not in general i i see i we've kind of gone this road of just being our own personal celebrities you know and just like broadcast but then i i think with the pandemic we've came closer together and just started collaborating again I, I guess yeah well that it, makes sense I mean it's shifted so many people's perspectives and it's humbled I know it's humbled myself it's humbled many people hmm. um and it's it's kind of brought to light how precious you know these friendships and these these people in our lives are and to, and to keep that close and um you know like it, it seems like everything that that's that hits the world in a really massive way throughout history there is always a bounce back because and great art that's created because that's it's subject material it's powerful it's painful it's it it brings out human emotion mm. um in every regard you know whether it's it was it was wars or battles or civil rights or or, or, or all these things it creates there's there's all these different movements that that result from painful times um and you know even my my ballet um uh, you know night of spring it's it's kind of you know about the dark night we all went through uh the sacrifices artists made to get back and it's literally four chapters of the year of the pandemic from 
shut down to stages being dark to you know honoring those that we lost and then the, the city coming back mm. is roughly these these four movements so it's like it's right there it's this is the story and how do we tell it in different ways in different fashions and of, of course there's photographic and visual art and and uh, all these things that are still happening and will continue to be because this is also put us in a corner where we're like all right what are you going to do you're just going to sit at home and just watch Netflix until your eyes fall out. Yeah. Or are you going to yeah. get off up your ass and, and do something that is worth showing people um, or, you know, uh, do a completely different craft, which many people have, have shifted to, but yeah, I, I can't be without though. Ultimately as what I realized, I can't be without performance. It's mm. just, it's part of me, man. It just, you, I, I need that. It's uh it's just that validation, you know, once you're part of it, it's, it's like, you need that little bit of applause, you need that self assurance, and you know, and yeah, the, the, the compliments don't hurt either. I mean, we need <laughs> it, we need to, we need to feed too. Yeah, you know, so to speak and, and uh, yeah, um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, performances this Thursday. I'm playing uh, again with the pigeon wing dance, we're playing uh, opening up uh, art exhibit and after that exhibit opening we're performing on a rooftop there uh oh, wow. in gowanus in brooklyn where so, about, by the way um it is called it's an italian place um hmm. volante let me check i can check somewhere about what it's called uh specifically it's tapeto volante in hmm. gowanus yeah so um one of the dancers uh, knows the owner of multiple restaurants and art uh, galleries. So again, it's just pivoting off of like, Hey, I got this place. Let's try this. And, yeah. and uh, so that's going to be a cool experience. It's going to probably take me two hours to get there, but uh, it's, it's worth it. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah. And, <laughs> uh, and again, we're playing in a plaza in uptown on, on uh, Sunday. So just keeping things going and, um, have some uh, uh, presenting my fiance's uh, uh, festival, which she's been doing for many years, which is already like bringing artists together and collaborating and creating new works. Yeah. In up Uptown Manhattan, it's called Higher Ground Festival. Mm. And uh, normally it's performed at the northern end of Fort Tryon Park in yeah. Inwood at the Ann Loftus Playground. It's like a big production, but these past you know, last summer we did it through Arts on Air and we're going to do it again uh, in, in the coming weeks uh, on Arts on Air and present the works um, up here. And uh, yeah, I got some uh, a great jazz trio coming at the end of the month, too. So just keep it rolling and, and uh, keep pitching ideas and hopeful, hoping that venues are welcoming. You know, it's a little tricky when now it's basically just from tip you know you're just kind of making money from whatever people are willing to give but uh thankfully people are are generous mm. and uh you know acknowledge the the strife that we're going through financially you know so yeah yeah <laughs> every little bit counts man yeah um oh man i just uh zonked out for two seconds sorry i had like a yeah. follow-up to that like uh oh man well, oh, do you have a set date to go back to the Lincoln Center? Yeah, we're supposed to open up the fall season on uh, September 21st. Yeah, yeah. So, but there are, you know, so many things that, that still need to be um, worked out, um, especially with the musicians. We're, we're in a similar situation like the uh, musicians at the Med, unfortunately. And... Um, yeah, it's it's put us into a bind in many many situations. We haven't been paid since last June, and mm -hmm. uh, just been living off of unemployment and random cash gigs, and you know whatever we can hustle. Yeah, um, you know a lot of people have had to move away. Um, it's weird, man. It's just everything's so fractured. Um, but whenever I do see friends again, it makes it all the more meaningful. And yeah, not to be too sappy, but it, it, it is surreal to know, to actually think about how long it has been. Time is kind of amorphous right now. That's true. Yeah. 
Um, and I really hope we do get back. Uh, but to be honest, I don't really, I don't, I'm, I, I've maybe penciled into the calendar, not to be too pessimistic, but there's just been, uh, to put it bluntly, I'm just, nothing will shock me <laughs> anymore at this point. And uh, <laughs> so I just got to hope for the best, prepare for the worst, because the worst has been happening. Mm, yeah. And, um, you know, and I, I, I can't even imagine it at this point, <laughs> to be honest. Like, I, is, is that going to happen? Can that happen? Yeah, yeah. And uh, a, a lot of it is dependent upon everyone um, doing their part, you know, as a society to get vaccinated and, and otherwise artists, you know, like myself and my colleagues, we can't get back to doing what we really do. Yeah. Uh, which is large scale, you know, productions with, you know, some of the finest companies in the world. And in the meantime, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll keep on trucking, but um, you know, there are those that just have simply retired. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, we've, we've lost some artists and left the city and so I'm going to pick up the pieces, but there's some pretty fantastic pieces <laughs> yeah. to pick yeah. up. You know, this that's one thing about New York I and mean, you never quit. It's just, um, you get smacked down. <laughs> you definitely get, get, get smacked down pretty hard. Oh, I know that yeah. pretty well myself. So, uh, I'm still here somehow. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we still uh, hanging, man. Yeah, no, it's just uh, it's the love, and you, you just need to you have to keep on going, like you said. It's just there's no other option but to adapt and, and also to innovate as well, you know. So yeah. like your series and, and just collaborating again, and then I I find that I think what the most important skill they should have taught artisans in school and in training is how to be a business person. I mean, if you know how to market yourself, uh, I think, and, and think about how to distribute your work, I feel like you can make a living now, particularly with our technology. Um, yeah. But I, I mean, also I've been struggling with that too. So it's like, I, I, I don't have the formal business training either. I have a degree in criminal justice and a graphic web design certificate. Then I found myself into you know, photography and music and the yeah. scene and um so i just i'm fascinated with the human condition but um yeah i don't know where i was going that i guess i i think there is opportunities to i think create your own market um particularly with uh y your background of, of course and the skill sets uh, uh yeah. and the quality of work you produce of course um but then it's like how do you just Kind of have to brainstorm like how are we gonna get yeah. it out in in a uh like i don't know like a uh you know and uh, yeah there's something that's beyond just the youtube uh yeah, you know yeah. because like unless you have an adorable cat doing something really cute uh you're not gonna reach uh, uh 10 million views uh well, see, maybe i should add that to some of my performances see that's what um, i'm trying to figure out now like <laughs> my my views are totally askew comparatively to my subscribers i'm like luckily i've been getting like i'm at over three hundred thousand views for this conversation series oh that's great but, yeah but my my subscribers are like 81 i'm like i don't know how to get subscribers <laughs> you have yeah. more subscribers on uh on your channel but then i notice the views i'm like my views yeah. are like awesome views but then it's like the subscribers but i, I don't know it's what, weird but the I know. I just keep on doing it, not for necessarily you know, like not for profit right now. Um, uh, it would be nice. It's just kind of a labor of passion and yeah, love. Yeah. It's just to keep the opportunity there and to keep things going. And and uh, obviously, money matters. Um, and and it is a skill that if you choose, you can you can market yourself. And it's something that a lot of p uh, players have had to adapt. Uh, Many people, you know, all of a sudden picked up a camera, picked up a microphone. How do I do, you know, finally? But luckily, I have a background in, you know, audio and video um, for several years now mm -hmm. uh, through, I have a recording studio in Sarasota, Florida, where I grew up. And my, my brother runs that, H&M Productions, H cool. SRQ. So um, a lot with uh, audio production. And uh, so it's just, it, that was a good thing to build on. It wasn't completely foreign to me. 
And so, um, cause it is intimidating to think about just self-production on, uh, whether it's video, but now it's, I got, you know, if I need to go do something, I got like my, my PA, I put on my back, I got my mics. Yeah. Uh, just like whatever I can shove into a cab, you know, yeah, and yeah. you know, just like sometimes even on a subway. So I got to live that, that New York style life and be completely mobile about it and, uh, you know, make it happen. There's, there were some cool things. Like there were some pop-up things in, in the fall, um, that we played around the Bethesda fountain, a lot of great, you know, um, musicians from the city. Uh, that was, you know, something unique, uh, that happened. I think there was two performances and wonderful soloists, uh, came there. I think George Schmidt, uh, a, a violent soloist organized things like that. And, um, you know, that's where you're just going to bring it all together. And, uh, there's this quasi stage and that kind of was like the epicenter. I think during the fall, you would have like, you know, hip hop video shoots. There's a wedding pictures <laughs> happening. There's some guy on like a Theorbo and then there's us playing Mozart over there. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> um, I think there's like at that time they called it the uplift orchestra, but I don't know if that's ever going to come back. Uh, but there's all these, these random gasps for, we need we need this we mm. need this this yeah. this performance this feeling of playing some Mozart, um, mm. and uh, I I just I keep pushing just just like when you ask me like hey you want to do this interview tomorrow I'm like well sure <laughs> why not <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's do it well I must uh, I must admit it may be out in a few weeks because it's we've been publishing each of these every two weeks you know via yep. uh, V thirteen uh, my a, a Toronto-based uh, V13 kind of digital media publication and then uh, mm -hmm. just every two weeks. So people like or publicists sometimes are like, where is it? I'm like, we told you every two weeks. I just want to forewarn you. Yeah. Um, but uh, I guess to just uh, I wouldn't want to take up any more of your time. Um, any words to the consumers of arts, you know, like people who there is total demand for art, but what would you say? Like give back to the artists or I don't know. Do you, I don't want to put words in your mouth or if this is a stupid question or not. Um, I'm just yeah. Kidding. I mean, obviously you either love art or, or it's either part of your life fully, especially in the city or it's something that's maybe not a priority. But uh, I know that if you embrace these performances, if you open up to, whether attending to them or helping, you know, raise funds for their projects. If you are of the means, uh, every little bit helps uh, to keep all of these, these newfound projects, these, these new collaborations going and building. And, and we just need people to embrace and really want that back. Mm. And, uh, you know, not, not just the, the Broadway and, you know, the, a uh, little bit more mainstream, but uh, give give the more abstract things a chance and uh, the new ideas and the, the people that push boundaries, whether it's visual or musical or dance. And because uh, that's what art needs. It needs mm. to always grow. And so take a risk, take a chance um, and just be out there. And hopefully we can continue that, you know, things won't get shut down again because uh, it is so powerful to be out and see people. Uh, and 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 feel the music, feel the response uh, yeah. in person. And um, you know, it's. I hope it doesn't go back to just purely uh, virtual again. But uh, to everyone, just yeah, embrace us. We'll embrace you. Mm. Awesome, yeah. awesome, man. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you. And it was a pleasure meeting you in person on Thursday. Uh, yeah. I'll be diving deeper into your work and, and uh, your partner's work and all your 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 YouTube channel when I have uh, time, which will be this sure. week, just con digesting. Um, yeah. And yeah, hopefully we, we get to see you, uh, you know, back at, in the Lincoln Center. But yeah. like you said, we can't just wait and hope, cross, wait for that. You get a, we're looking yeah. forward to seeing what you guys produce and uh, experiment with as well. Uh, yeah. Hold on one second. I'm going to stop recording.